National Broadcasting Company invites you by transcription to join the chase. There's always the hunter and the hunted, the pursuer and the pursued. It may be the voice of authority or a race with death and destruction, the most relentless of the hunters. There are times when laughter is heard as counterpoint and moments when sheer terror is the theme. But always, there is the chase. You're a tourist, mister? Well, I know just as soon as I saw you standing up here at the bar. Oil's my handle. Most of the old China hands call me Tattoo Charlie. How do you like Hong Kong, mister? Ain't she a great little town? I've been here off and on now for the last five... What are you looking at, mister? This gimmick I got here in my hand? That's a Chinese Buddha. Made of gold. They could have bought and sold Hong Kong twice over not so long ago. I can see now that you're laughing. Just like all the rest. But if you... Set me up a beer to wash the clinkers out of my crew. I'll swap you a yarn that'll make your eyes pop out like oysters on a half shell. I'm not superstitious, mister. Get that straight before we begin. I can't help thinking it was Saturday the 6th of June when this rhubarb commenced to start. I was naval seaman first class when my ship put into Hong Kong Harbor. As soon as I got shore leave, I headed for Lee Hip Singh's joint, just off Queen Street, near the main drag. Lee Hip's a tattooer, the best in the East. And I wrote him in advance to make a date and add another masterpiece to the collection I already got on my arms and back. Look at this time, Mr. Tully. We have very little room. Uh, can you fit it in here between Betty Grable and the Taj Mahal? A little bit too small. So, turn around. Ah, uh, what's uh, under my shoulder blades? On left side is the uh, Eiffel Tower, nothing on right. And start getting the old way. Uh, hold still. You, uh, just in from what part, Mr. Tully? Manila. From here? From Osa. From Osa. Taipei? Yeah. Right, take it easy. Well, neither you bear down a little hard. When you sail for Promosa, Mr. Tully. Five AM tomorrow morning. Why? Well, nothing, nothing important. Except uh, Lee Hip have good plan on Formosa. Maybe you'll take him small flavor for me? Well, you want me to deliver something? He's a uh, good luck Buddha. He's made of gold. Lee Hip plus said to Tully. No good luck Buddha be delivered okay. You got a Buddha. Made of gold? Uh, wait here, Mr. Tully. Keep things show you. He shuffled out of the room in his black pajamas and slippers and come back a minute later with something in his hand. It was a laughing Buddha. Made of gold. I kind of lost my interest when I saw it was only maybe two inches high. A Buddha at Lee Lock, Mr. Tully, is very important here. It's my friend. A press on paper inside base. He ain't very big, is he? What's he worth? He's maybe six, seven hundred Hong Kong dollars. But what lot more to my friend in the uh, other way? Mr. Tully, you bring Buddha to Formosa and do Lee Hip to turn. One day, Lee Hip to good turn for Tully, too. I... <laughs> you got a telephone, Lee Hip? There must be restaurant up there. Uh, you, you stay here one moment. Lee Hip, go see. He was lying, and I knew it. That phone ring was come from his bedroom next door. While I was wondering what a guy who made coolie money was doing with a phone this door, I heard him jabbering away in the next room in China. Oh, boy, was getting excited. He sounded scared. 
When he come back two minutes later, his skin was as green as that band on your Panama, mister. He looked like a man who just got the fright of his natural life. Mr. Sully! Mr. Sully! Hey, what's Sully. with you? Mr. Sully. Eight men more. Explain. No, no more. He hit the floor like a sack of flour and didn't move. He croaked just like that right in front of my glimpse, mister. Not a scratch on his side. Must have been his ticker. An excitement on the phone. I wasn't waiting for no medical reports. I jumped into my shirt and started for the street. But I only got as far as the door. There were two of them, mister. And one in front was built like a wheelhouse. With a fat poker face and eyes that reminded me of floating marbles and a pot of blubber. Wait. Oh, yo. You step inside, please. Right, now, wait a minute. Why I... Lee Hipsing on floor, please? He's dead. You kill him, please. My name, Lieutenant Choi. Hong Kong police. Oh. You a friend of Lee Hipsing? I'm just a sailor, Lieutenant, on the... China Doll. We sail for Formosa in the morning. Uh, Formosa, please? Yeah. You do some favor for Lee Hip on Formosa? How do you know that, Lieutenant? You come with me. You ain't gonna jug me, Lieutenant. No argument, just come. Please? Next thing I know, Mr. is pushing me into a banged-up jeep and we're driving to the ferry. Twenty minutes after we're over Victoria Bay and... Heading across the Kowloon Peninsula with the lights on Hong Kong Island fading out behind us. And the red frontier moving closer up ahead. Go on, Lieutenant. I tell you soon. Now, wait a minute. You know, this is highly irregular. You know that, don't you? Please. I'm a United States citizen. I got a right to my rights. You listening to me, Lieutenant? Where are you taking me? The Kami board is only 20 miles away. I, I got to get back to my ship, Lieutenant. We sail in six hours. Don't you hear me? Let me loose. Let me loose. Maybe I'm slow on the uptake, mister, but I ain't so thick I didn't figure he was taking me for a one-way ride. My Lieutenant gag was just a come on. I knew I had to talk fast to swap my one-way fare for a round-trip ticket. Ah, <laughs> look, is this trip necessary, Mr. Choi? Quiet, please. Oh, I ain't giving you no arguments, am I? Why the rough stuff? If there's something you want out of Tattoo Charlie, just ask for it. We ask when we come to border. Soon, now. You mean you drive me off the British line? You must be a commie agent. What do you want with me? What's the matter? Cow block road. Want me to move him? You stay, please. I move cow with fists. He pulled out a cannon as big as your leg and fired twice in the air. The cow jumped one way and I jumped the other, right out of the side of the jeep and into a ditch. I picked myself up and started to run. I could almost feel the slugs from his partner's gun as they slid past my ear. What happened? Well, I'm here, ain't I? My luck hell out. That was only the beginning. Uh, rest me up another lager, mister. But now it really gets to be a yawn. Ah... I uh, took me two hours to get back to Ferry Slip. Now I'm acting like a scared rabbit all the way. I knew they was chasing me, searching in the scrub the way a hound dog scratches for fleas. But by the time I'm on the ferry moving back across the bay, I'm feeling easier. Well, I'm back on Queen Street and heading for a British copper precinct when... I run smack into Eddie Trock, third mate on the China Doll. He's 
got more than a couple in him already, and he's looking for a fight when he spots me coming up the sidewalk and grabs my arm. That's too jolly. Eddie. How you been all night, you stupid slug? I, uh, I've been busy. Busy? When you ought to be getting tanked? We sail at five. Something happened, Eddie. I gotta go see the coppers. The coppers? What for? I've been kidnapped. Kidnapped? You? <laughs> well, they trade you back for a hunk of rusty bulkhead. They wanted this, Eddie. What do you think of it? See? What's that? A Buddha. A Buddha? Made of gold. <laughs> hey, you thirsty, Charlie? Mm. Dry as dust. I'll buy you a shovel. Right near, Charlie. And maybe we'll go and see the coppers together. We had some scotch after that, and then we tried a little Hong Kong gin. By 3 a.m., this is where it was getting cozy again. With a couple hundred American, no question about that. You know you so well. Only oh, a couple of hundred. And they went all that trouble to take you for a ride. That's funny, eh? Yeah, it's a scream. And they know you had it all the time, only they didn't try to grab it. Huh? <laughs> Never mind, Charlie. Have another drink. You just got time for three more fingers before we sail. It was them last three fingers that did it, mister. Because I passed out like a light. When I come to and shook the busted glass out of my skull, the joint was empty. Eddie was gone. So was my little gold Buddha. It was Eddie who crossed me, and I should have known. He cut his grandmother's throat for a chew of tobacco. When I turned around and started walking back toward Princess Street, I passed an alley and I heard something groan. It was Eddie Truck, lying flat in his face. His shirt was torn nearly half off his back, mister. He had a ten-inch butcher knife sticking out of his side. Eddie. Eddie, what happened? Watch yourself, Charlie. They'll get you, too. He rolled over once, mister, and he stretched out his hand. When he opened his palms, he kicked the gong, and a laughing Buddha rolled out at my feet. Hello, please. Charlie. No time now for a ride, please. Turn. Ain't gonna shoot me in the back, Joy. Turn. Hey, what are you doing? Lay off my shirt. Stop pulling at me. Let me go. He was tearing the clothes off my back when the cop blew his whistle. Miss Troy made a run for it. I slid down against the wall on rubber legs. Twenty minutes later, I was sitting in the city brig. Wondering if they was going to hang me for murder. Yes, you know. My name's Howard, old boy. British intelligence. Yeah, how do you feel? Oh, great. I'm booked for murder. I'm in a regular holiday mood. Did anyone mention murder? What'd you lock me up for? You are free to go whenever you please. After you answer my questions. I told that discharge and everything I know. I found Eddie Truck in the street with a sticker in his bag. The commie agent was the one who'd done it after he tried to take me for a ride. For this? Oh, you got my bullet. Rather interesting. Where did you get it? Well, I told that to the sergeant, too. Lee Hip Singh gave it to me. To take to a friend. Oh, yes, the Chinese tattoo artist who died of a heart attack this evening. And it was his heart. Hmm. Very interesting, but let's get back to the Buddha. 
You say he asked you to deliver it to someone. To whom? The well, name was inside the bull. We found the slip of paper in the base. Was anyone else mentioned? What is this? Why should that two-inch hunk of gold start a ruckus this size? The Buddha isn't gold, old boy. Merely gold-filled. And it ain't even worth 200. As an ornament? <laughs> Hardly. Here. You giving it back to me? Naturally, it's yours. Thanks. Can I, uh, I go now? Of course. Just like that? Just like that. Oh, and incidentally, you'd uh, better buy yourself another shirt before you're pulled in again for indecent exposure. I couldn't believe it, mister. They let me sail out just free as air. I had a feeling there was a hitch. And I was right. Five minutes later, as I'm walking down the street, I get the feeling I'm being tailed. I look behind me and I see a tall guy with his hands in his pockets staring inside his store window, just like that's all he had got to do. I walk a little faster. And he's still behind me, keeping step. So I start to run. He starts to run. The next thing you know, I'm tearing down the street like a wild man with my engine in high. They were hounding me. Chase was on again. What did I do? What did they want from me? The love of my heart was they after I give him a slip once more. I duck into Repulse Street where Sugar Ball Annie lives. Annie's an old China hand, mister. She's been here 40 years. She speaks Chinese like a native. But the Sugar Ball's always good for a handout when the going gets rough. Annie? Annie, wake up. Let me in. Annie? Who's out there? Patsy Charlie. Let me in. You're being followed? Yeah. By who? Everybody in town, practically. I'm getting so popular that I didn't tear souvenirs out of my shirt. What have you done, Charlie? Nothing. Who did you call? I didn't call nobody, I tell you. I'm still going to take myself a breather and press out of lungs. Take a look out of the window, Annie, and see if there's anybody on the street. Stay put. Well? There's a tall guy outside moving up and down. You recognize him, Annie? There's nobody I don't recognize in this part of China. He's a British agent. What about a Chinese named Troy? Ever hear him? Small guy, built wide, with a face like a Chinese cat. That's my boy. Red agent, works in and out of Hong Kong, Macau. All right, Charlie. Move the law. You ain't throwing me out, man. I ain't running a room in house for hot ones like you, Charlie. That's a thing. Hmm. All right. Wait a minute. Hmm? I got an old shirt left here by a crumb on my low. Maybe it'll fit you. The one you're wearing is hanging off your back. Ah, oh, thanks, Annie. You can go up on the roof and cross over to the Chinese car joint next door. The guy outside is looking for you to come out of this house and not the next one. And don't come back here, Charlie. This is Jerry? Yes. You could have washed. It smells like a ghost pipe. You want the drunk and French perfume? Put it on and get... Okay, okay, take it easy. Just let me change it. What's the matter? Why are you staring at? Your back, Charlie. What about my back? For crying out loud, what are you gaping at? Tell me. It's a kind of a map tattooed on your back with some tiny writing under it. A map? Get over here by the mirror. And fix your head. Oh, what would you do that for? Oh, Lay right here. I told him I want a picture of a dancing girl in that spot. Where? And what? Eddie Trock. They found him with half his shirt on. Who's Eddie Trock? And Troy. He's the guy who tried to rip my chain off, too. No, I get it. In the dark, he must have mistook Eddie Trock for me. And this tattoo must be what they're looking for, Annie. Is he one sex? No. Well, you told me you're three Chinese. It's a different dialect. Must be from Mongolia somewhere. I can't make it out, but I know someone who can. Get him. Oh, oh no, that's Thursday. Let me wait till I got what Eddie Trock got before I find out why I'm the patsy. I'll be back in half an hour, son. And don't open your door to anyone else but me. Did you get it, mister? 
The answer was on my back. Lee had copied a message to his pal in Formosa. The last and Buddha was just to identify me. It was a top tip that was important. Anyway, the silver ball come back about 20 minutes later. <laughs> Old China, you're the spirit fish long. Who's there? It's me, Carly. Open up. Who's there? The candle is only for Carl. You don't know about Chinese dialects and it's worth knowing. Well, let's see if we can read this, Chinese. Turn around and let him look. Well? This dialect is a very ancient one. It hasn't been used for many years. Well, never mind that double talk. What the child says, uh, he says, the gold is hidden in the cave. Follow the red line. What red line? There seems to be a red line that runs through this diagram tattooed above the message. Perhaps it refers to that. Gold. You hear that about gold, Charlie? You say anything else? No. However, perhaps I can supply a few details. No? I was here in Hong Kong during the Japanese occupation. I recall a rumor that suggested they were keeping the case for the gold bars on the island, stolen from the various banking organizations. Hello, Jenny. Don't you see? The Tommies want to know where that gold is here. So did the British and the national government of Formosa. Me Hip was sending the dope to Formosa on my back. Henry, you got any idea how much gold is here? It's after the liberation. The British posted an award for each invasion leading to the whereabouts of five hundred million dollars in gold bullion. Five hundred million? What? Five How much is your reward, honey? If I recall, said one hundred and fifty thousand Hong Kong dollars. Come and see it up to his car. He's still outside. He ain't there anymore, sir. He was gone when we come in. Now that I want him to grab me, take the powder. All right, I'm going back to that limey jail. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to sell a hide off my back, Annie. For a hundred fifty grand. Ha, ha. Now, when I left Sugar Bowl, Annie, to try to walk straight up Queen Street, the sound might have had a just moment. I figured I'd be safer if I picked my way along the waterfront and then cut across. And I kept the sharp eye on every hole in the wall as I moved down along the road that skirts the bay. I was halfway over and just about to cut away from the walls when I noticed him. When he raised his head, I saw it was Troy. I started to run, but I soon changed my mind, Mr. Because there ain't no way I ever heard I'd spin to 45. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I'll wait. You don't move, please. What do you want, Troy? You come, please. Where? Second time, it's in the war. We're going for both times? No talk. Walk. He walked me to the end of the wharf and shoved me into a dirty stamp pan with a tin roof and ragged tail. He's a tough-looking monkey in a coolie hat, swinging around with an inboard motor. As soon as we hit the deck, he turned her over and she started to move. Heading for the harbor and the open sea. Where are you taking me? Soon you Well, can't we talk this over? No talk, please. Just sit. Now, I'm warning you, boy. I got my life. When the American ambassador hears about this, it's going to be trouble. I'll be a international incident. That's what I'll be. You'll be food for fish. I do, Charlie. Nothing more. Listen, the tattoo's on my back. Copy it down and let me go, will you? I won't horn it. You can take it. They're shooting at us. They're shooting at us from that boat up the fourth time. Let me out of here. Don't move, please. Let me out. Let me out. How do you like that, mister? Sounds like a moving picture, huh? Played by the pretty horse in the nick of time. It was a harbor patrol boat. Half an hour later, I was inside that pretty shed again. Only this time, it was a pleasure. Ah, 
Oh, you get a bit of a soaking in there. Oh, that's all right. The door I'm getting paid, <laughs> I swim the tiny street. You're getting paid all right. By who? You. For what? The tattoo map I got on my back. There's a reward out for that goal, ain't there? I see you've learned quite a bit since our last meeting. You figured I had some dope on that friggin' hog, didn't you? Well, you were right, only I didn't know about it till an hour ago. Please hit for a tattoo on my back that's worth half a billion to you and 150 degrees to make that one. Oh, look. Well, I don't see anything except the silly picture. What a map! The tiny right under my shoulder. There's nothing there but a smudge of dirty paint over there. Sorry. A smudge of dirty... This can't be... Give me a mirror, quick! He was right, Mr. There was nothing left of the map of the tiny right. See, Lee Hip was in a hurry and he didn't have time to use his needle to make a turn and then he just used his tattoo painting. It washed right off when I went overboard. Well, that's the story, Miss Jimmy. All I got left is a little gold Buddha I'm holding in my hand. Uh, what's that? You want to buy the Buddha for a souvenir? <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I couldn't do that, Miss. I got a sentimental interest, Miss Little Guy. Nice. Okay. Well, now, listen, I wouldn't do this for anybody, but I can see you want to get a folks back home with Phil. So I'll make a sacrifice. Just a And good luck to you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ha, I know it just as I tell you to send me to bar. Oh, yes, my handle. Most of the old kind of hands call me Captain Charlie. How you like Hong Kong, Mr. See a great old town? I've been here off now, now, for the last part. Uh, how you look now, Mr. You think I got it in my hand? That's a tiny Buddha. Maybe gold. And it could have bought and sold Hong Kong twice over. Not so long ago. <laughs> by James Harvey. Now you can enjoy Dragnet Sundays on NBC. Mm -hmm.